You're so good, you're so good, you're so good. All stars, you're so good. You're way better than last season and all the rest, you're so good. I was tired of seeing trash casts. You're so good, you're so good, you're so good. All right, that's not a good way to start the video, Jolie. Welcome to the Big Brother Breakdown with Jolene. Welcome to the BB Breakdown with Jolene. That's me. Hey guys, and welcome to the Big Brother Breakdown with Jolene. That's me. I break down all things Big Brother season 22. If you have never been to my channel before, make sure you hit that subscribe and smash the bell so you get notified every time I post a new Big Brother video this summer. Also, if you give this video a thumbs up, we have a lot to talk about because this is my first video where I will be breaking down what's been going on on the live feeds and a lot has been going down. I've been plugged into them literally 24 seven. And then when I do sleep the next day, I have to go back and replay. It's a thing. You guys, if you're live feeders, you know what I'm talking about. So we're gonna try to get through all the craziness. Whatever I miss, feel free to leave it in the comments. I will try my best to give you the best of the live feeds. Also, spoiler alert, if you don't like spoilers, you're gonna wanna log off now because I am gonna be spoiling things because I know stuff and I'm gonna tell you. So I warned you. So if you get spoiled, I don't wanna see it in the comments. Like, you spoiled it for me. I warned you. So let's go. First things first, we are learning so much about these all-stars and what happened on their seasons, their feelings all these years later, who they still talk to, who they don't talk to, how social media has been for them. It has just been such a joy to watch the feeds this year, when last year it was not a joy at all to watch the feeds. It was horrendous. So if we could maybe get an all-star season already in the mix next summer, that would be great. Or we could just revisit BB6 and bring them all back. You know, that's I'm just throwing it out there. Alison Grodner, our production. Maybe you want to think about it. All right, let's break down Bailey first. Bailey is being very vulnerable. She's sharing a lot about herself. She's making relationships. She has a final two deal with Davon. They solidified it. They were like, I got you. You got me. Black Girl Magic. It gave me chills. I don't know why it's taken CBS so long to diversify a cast or even to have two powerful black women on the show, but we needed it. So now that we've done it, let's keep progressing. Bailey basically told Davon, I am here for you and whatever I have to do to get you to the end and you to win is a win for me. And I was just like, I can't. It was so emotional. Warning, this breakdown of the live feed and spoilers will be a little bit emotional. It'll be all over the place because it's just uh, my heart, my heart, my heart is so happy with this all-star season. Bailey's talked a lot about her relationship with Swaggy and her and Kaser have had some in-depth conversations. Kaser is a gift. He's a gift. I know some of you don't like Kaser and I know Kaser does have some, you know, gaps in his game here and there, but he's a gift on the feeds. To hear him talk about life and things going on and the current culture is so refreshing from last year seeing baby bangs try to bang everyone or jerks and aqua douche and the sex stool. So thank you, Kaser. Bailey's also in good with a lot of the women house guest. She's also in good with Kevin. No one right now is looking at targeting Bailey. People are actually really happy that Bailey's around and I think she's playing a fantastic social game. She is learning a lot about her fellow house guests. She seems engaged. She just seems a lot more chill than she was on her first season and it is great to see. Her and Davon agreed that they can't make it so obvious that they're a final two and that they literally are each other's ride or die. So they're going to go off and make side alliances, which is yes, how you play the game. It's how you play the game. I am excited to see what Bailey can do. She also spilled a little bit of tea from last season. Apparently when Jerkson's parents were at the finale and then Jerkson came out with the confetti and he was like, where's mama? Where's mama? I'm not racist. I'm not racist. Before that, Jerkson's parents found Bailey and were like, we're, he's not racist. I swear he's not. He's not. He's, he's good. Like, we're good, right? And she was like, yeah, I, I mean, I don't speak for all black people in America, but sure. And they hugged her. I mean, it's so on brand for Jerkson that his parents would find the one black person they know 
from Big Brother and be like, he's cool, right? Like, can you tell everybody else? Can you, t can you tell him that he's not racist? Like I said, Bailey is developing other relationships with house guests, Kaser, Kaser really enjoys her. Janelle enjoys her. Nicole A and her have a good rapport. Nicole F and Danny seem, they haven't said anything about Bailey in a negative way. They seem to get along. Bailey and Keisha, I mean, Bailey and Cody. Bailey actually is getting along with Tyler. So Bailey's really placing herself in a good spot in the house at this moment in time. And it looks like Cody we will be getting his nominations this afternoon, but it looks like Cody doesn't even have her on his radar. So that's a good thing for Bailey. Speaking of Cody, Cody and Tyler are in love. Yes, Tyler is Cody's new Derek. Cody and Tyler definitely pre-gamed. And I saw a very interesting tweet from Dom, who is Danny Donato, aka Danny Briones' husband, who played with her in BB13, where they met. Dom has been covering her social media. If you're on social media, definitely follow him because he is spilling a lot of tea about Big Brother. He is talking to other house guests on Instagram Live and Twitter tweeting things and he tweeted this little thing that we should all know that pre-gaming was a thing and they all pre-gamed because it felt like Tyler and Cody fell into this alliance with each other and bond really quickly. Cody really respects Tyler. Tyler seems to respect Cody. And so that's where we're at. As far as Cody's nominations go, it looks like he's most likely going to nominate Kevin and Keisha, which to me is devastating because those are two of my favorites. If I had to pick seven people, my dream final seven, it would be Keisha, Kevin, Davon, Bailey, Janelle, Kaser, and Nicole Anthony. That's just my opinion. You guys leave your dream seven in the comments section. Cody is also working with Nicole Franzel. It seems that Cody loves Nicole Franzel. They are possibly a final two. I find it hard to believe that Cody wouldn't have a guy final two coming from the Hitman, but maybe Nicole is really his true final two. Only time will tell, but he loves Nicole Franzel because apparently he has the ultimate respect for her because in BB-18, she was one of the few that stood by his atrocious brother, Polly, and his shit gameplay. So Cody's like, I want to repay her. So they've talked a lot on the slide, but it's not that slide because everybody is noticing. But Nicole and Cody are definitely out there trying to lie to people, saying like, no, we don't. I like barely talked to her. Like her? I don't know her. I think she's like from Michigan or something. I just talked to Derek. That's all I do. And Nicole's like, I don't really know how Cody feels because like I just like podcasts and stuff and it's just like I'm really emotional right now and I have to sit on my chin right here and I just like can't take it and it's just like I only brought so many sets of magic watching PJs and I'm just, I miss my best friend Victor. I'm just tired. I have to cry. I have to cry. She's been crying a lot on the feeds, you guys. A lot. We were only on day three and she's at like Christy from BB21 level tears. <laughs> now, Nicole did say night one that she's on her period and we all know. I mean, if you're a woman, you know, you know, hormones, that, that, that's a rough thing. But I think this might be more than hormones. Nicole seems to be carrying a lot of weight on her shoulders. The first night on the feeds, she was like, I did not like the person I was in BB-18. I have to apologize to Davon because she gave me her vote. I didn't even recognize that person. I feel so much better now, but I have my period and menstruation is hard. <laughs> and I don't want to play like the way I did in BB-18. However, she quickly resorted back to playing the way she did in BB-18. And what I mean by that is she has already told Cody that she will make a girl alliance only to them throw them under the bus and tell him everything he needs to know. And then he should make a guy alliance and do the same. So it's still the same Nicole. It's still the same Nicole that's willing to throw all the women under the bus. So it seemed like she wanted to repair her image because a lot of people out there obviously are hating on Nicole Franz on half for a while. And a lot of people out there don't think she deserved her BB-18 win and so that's you know part of the theme of the season is people with something to prove but i think nicole like says things and then she forgets she's just like did i say that i'm so sorry but she is crying constantly she has cried to christmas who she is good friends with now she has cried to danny donato aka danny briones and let me tell you guys i was shocked to find out that her and danny donato are BFFs. They're like really good friends outside of this house. I would never guess. I wanted Danny to come in this game and play with like Janelle and Davon, but no, she's playing with Nicole Franzel and Cody and Tyler and David, the people I don't want her to play with, but it's her game. She can play with who she wants to. And, and it's my 
video and I can cry if I want to because it breaks my heart <laughs> to watch her play with Nicole Franzel. Janelle and Danny haven't even spoken yet. Now this could be calculated. It could. They could have talked about this outside of the game with all this pre-gaming that went on and maybe they're keeping their distance because I find it weird that Janelle hasn't approached Danny yet. It's very strange but again we're only on day three. So Nicole was crying because she was tired. Then she was crying because she missed Victor. And then she was crying to Christmas in the bathroom on the feeds saying that Janelle scares the shit out of her. And I was like, <laughs> she should. She should. It seems as though from watching the last couple nights of the feed that Janelle is no fan of Nicole Franzel. And Franzel is taking every opportunity to throw Janelle under the bus to other people, as is Danny Donato. She's been throwing Janelle and Kaser's name out there since the first night. Nicole was even, she even woke up this morning and Ian was like, have you seen Janie? And she was like, who? And he's like, Janelle, no, I haven't seen her. I think she's still sleeping, which is like really unfair because normally they wake you up. Like she's even narking on people's sleep. But let me tell you something. We'll get to Janelle in this video, but Janelle is keeping the feeds interesting because she is just having a tea party and we are all being served and confirming a lot of the preseason rumors that we've all been talking about. So Nicole Franz was like, I'm scared of Janelle and I don't think we're on the same page. And Chris was like, don't worry, I'm gonna be your meat shield. The meat here. Christmas, she is someone who um, I'm not hating her game so far. I think she has a lot to prove since she spent her whole BB-19 in a cast and up Paul's ass. But now she's free to do what she wants and what she wants seems to be making a lot of final twos. She's made what seems like a final two with Nicole Franzel. She also approached Tyler and was like, hey, my number one was supposed to be on the show, AKA Josh. Your number one was supposed to be on the show, AKA COVID Casey. Neither of them are on here, so let's work together. No one will see it coming. We'll just check in from time to time and here we go. And Tyler's like, okay, seems cool. Seems like, you know, I mean, I just, I don't really know how to play the game. I just don't know how to play it anymore, which Tyler did try to say to Davon on the feeds a few nights ago and Davon was like, mm, like you're trying to play the game right now and trying to play me. Tyler, nobody believes you don't know how to play the game, but he's definitely playing this sad boy role. He's walking around with his bowling balls between his legs with his surfboard just hanging. Like, oh, man, I'm just, I don't know what to do. But when he's up in the HOH room talking to Cody, he comes alive again. So it's a strategy. And I don't hate Tyler for the strategy, and it's actually working on a lot of people in the house, but Davon did see right through it. Now we did see Nicole Franzel and Janelle today had a moment on the feeds where they were alone in like the showman's lover's little room. And we learned that Janelle was actually invited to Nicole Franzel's wedding. We're just like, what? I thought you two hated each other because Janelle was on the feed last night. She couldn't sleep. She took some melatonin and things started coming out and she was sharing it all with our favorite little night owl, Nicole Anthony. And Nicole Anthony was just like sitting there like the rest of us would be in BB heaven going, and then what? And so Janelle confirmed to Nicole Anthony that yes, both Casey and Josh tested positive for COVID. That's why they're not on this all-star season. And Memphis and Keisha or Keisha and Kevin, I can't remember the exact combination, were the alternates that filled in. And she was like, this is so much better. <laughs> I picked the wrong time to start this video. And Janelle was saying to Nicole Anthony that she's thrilled that these alternates came in instead of Josh and Casey because that would have made their game a lot harder. Spoilers today, yow, wow, 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 wow. Spoilers today, yow, wow, wow, wow. Janelle also confirmed a rumor that was going around like crazy preseason of BB22 that Dan Giesling told Janelle that Nicole Franzel is in fact the reason that Derek is not on this season of All Stars. And I was like, Thank you, Janelle. You are spilling so much tea. And the feeds did not cut. Janelle was on fire on the feeds last night slash very early this morning. Again, thank you, Melatonin and Honesty. She was telling Nicole A that Nicole F's game looks like this. Sit in bed with Showmance for nine weeks. Then on week nine, roll out of the bed and say, 
Okay, I'm ready to play. I learned to play. Cho H, can you get off my foot? I'm ready to play. Janelle is making these feeds. It is, she literally is carrying this season on her shoulders and the feeds. But then back to Janelle and Nicole having a chat today in that same room where Janelle was just spilling the tea to Nicole A about Nicole F. Nicole F and Janie have this conversation and they're basically telling each other, yeah, nobody knows we're friends. Nobody, nobody guesses that we're friends or that I was invited to your wedding. And Nicole Franzel's like, I know, we're like really good friends. Even though Nicole Franzel was just crying the night before to Christmas saying that Janelle scares the shit out of her and Janelle has been going around just putting salt in Nicole Franzel's game and Nicole Franzel's been putting salt in Janelle's game. So I think that in the end, they're both just lying to each other. They're not really friends. I've been invited to a lot of weddings of people I don't even like. And I went and I gave a gift and I just never talked to them again. That's how life is, especially in the Midwest. And Janelle is from the Midwest, so she knows what that's like, as is Nicole F. Speaking of never talking again, there has been some drama regarding Nicole F and Danny and they're teaming up together. They've been talking a lot, gossiping, kikiing, if you will, starting on the first night on the feeds. And what came up? Nicole Anthony. Now this is a topic that these vets and all-stars probably don't want to touch because Nicole Anthony, we all feel very protective of her because she was in that shit season last season. So some people are calling Danny and Nicole Franzel out for being mean girls. I don't know if I'm ready to go there yet, but they definitely both said that they ghosted Nicole A when she hit them up on social media in the DMs to be on her podcast. Danny said she opened the message, read it, and then just left Nicole A, our little unicorn princess, on read because it was about a month before All Stars and she doesn't really like to do a lot of podcasts. I think I've only heard one podcast that Danny Donato, aka Danny Briones, was on, and it was Jessica from BB19, I believe. So that tracks. Um, not replying, Dominic, her husband, hit Twitter and said that it was his. His idea. He is just, he is doing the husband lord's work on Twitter. Every insult people throw at Danny, Dom pops up. He's like, it was me. It's my fault. I did it. I'm a dick. She's awesome. Keep liking her. Keep liking her. That's a good husband. Nicole Franzel, I don't know how I feel about this one because I believe Nicole Anthony was on Nicole Franzel's Copa Caliente podcast. So I feel like Nicole Franzel should return the favor. That's proper podcast etiquette. As a podcaster, I think she should have done Nicole Anthony's podcast. But I think Nicole Franzel's a little threatened by having another Nicole in the house because she actually said on the feeds to Danny, I didn't think they would have Nicole Anthony in the house because there's two Nicoles. I'm like the only Nicole. And so it's like not fair and I miss Victor and I have my period and I have a zit on my chin and I'm just like, I don't know what to do. And I'm just like, Janelle scares the shit out of me. Christmas, will you still be my meat shield? <laughs> Danielle brought it up because she was worried that if Nicole Anthony won head of household the first night that she might have targeted Danny since Danny left her on read. But that's not Nicole Anthony's style. And Nicole Anthony so far hasn't brought up at all that neither of them got back to her regarding her podcast. Now, Danny, like I said, I'd love to see her team up for my own personal reasons with a Davon, with a Janelle. And Davon's actually trying to bring the two together because Day has hit up Janelle. She's hit up Danny now. She's talked to Nicole. Nicole finally gave Davon what she's been waiting for. And that's a thank you for giving her her vote in BB-18, and also she wanted to talk to her about the fact that Nicole said awful things about Davon on the feeds of BB-18. So after Davon voted for her, a lot of people came at Davon on social media, like, why would you vote for this woman? She has said these awful things about you that Davon didn't know at the time. So Davon laid it out for Nicole Franzel. Who thought she had James vote that season? She thought she had quite a few votes that she didn't in fact have. And Davon basically told her, a vote for you, was just a vote against Paul. Because Nicole Franzel said she was very surprised that she got Natalie's vote that season. And Day was like, yeah, because Natalie said she would never vote for Paul after the situation he had with Meech and calling her the C word. And Nicole Franzel's like, oh, I thought it was because I had like killer gameplay and I had that picnic blanket outfit that I wore on finale night, but I guess it's not. I'm just gonna go cry. Christmas, can you lay in front of me? Can you help me? So that was really interesting to hear Davon actually express to Nicole what was really going on in the jury house when Nicole Franzel didn't seem to have any idea. And Nicole did say, 
Finally, after all these years. Thank you, Day. Thank you for voting for me. It really means a lot that you gave me $500,000. And Day's like, yeah, we're square. Not, not, they're not, they're not square. I'm waiting for Day to just, just stab her in the back. Get her, Day. Get her. Get her to the farm. Get her back to the farm. Like I said, Davon's been putting in work. She put in work with Keisha. They had a great conversation today and Keisha opened up a lot about her season BB10 because when Day was in sequester, she rewatched BB10, which everyone should rewatch BB10. You should rewatch BB10 on a yearly basis. It's so good. So Keisha was open to it. I love Keisha. Did I mention that I love Keisha? Please, Cody, don't put her up, but I'm pretty sure you're gonna put her on the block, but she could win the power of veto. And side note, like I said, this video is gonna be all over the place. Both Kaser and Janelle promised that if Keisha is put on the block and they win power of veto, they're gonna take her off the block. And I believe that they will do that because Kaser and Janelle were originally supposed to go up. That's right, Cody was like, I'm putting up Kaser and Janelle. Nicole Franzel was like, you should do it. Danny was like, you should do it. Tyler's like, you should do it. Even though Kaser and Janelle were doing a really good job. They even tricked me on the first night of pretending that they don't really keep in contact. And they're keeping this up to everyone else when they're asked, which is a great gameplay. I mean, I did want the moment where Kaser sees Janelle and they run up like, I wanna run to you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Tell me, will you stay or will you run away? And then hug and leap in the air and then automatically win the game. But we didn't get that. We got the awkward like oh is that are you do i know you did, did we play on two seasons together that's so weird but any of these all-stars if they're true all-stars which people said on twitter they will know that janelle and kaser are always going to work together so janelle and kaser and keisha were all getting very weird vibes from cody that they were in fact going to be put on the block when janelle and kaser finally went up to talk to cody separately they compared notes between themselves and other people and realized oh, wait, this guy is not saying the same thing he's saying to everyone else. Some people he's saying, you're fine, you're good. But he wouldn't give Kaser that confirmation that Kaser wanted. So they both decided, Janelle and Kaser, to use their passes and do the safety suite twist. Now you might be thinking, what is the safety suite twist? Well, here's my understanding of it. For the first three weeks, everyone in the house gets a pass. It's almost like you're backstage and you're a groupie and you're seeing your favorite band. And you have one opportunity within those three weeks to throw your pass in before noms if you feel like you might be nominated. And then you will go to a separate location on the feeds. They were saying it was a studio nearby, but within the studio. The house is in on the CBS lot and you play a competition. Now, if you win, that competition, you then are guaranteed safety that week, cannot be nominated, plus you get to pick one other person to keep safe as well. They were going back and forth. Should we do it? Should we not? Should we do it? Should we not? Keisha and Janelle were talking about it. And I'm like, you both need to do it. Kaser, you need to do it. I cannot lose Janelle and Kaser week one. And sure enough, they did it. Spoiler alert, Kaser won. It was some kind of tone competition with music. And Kaser, I guess, got a really good time. Janelle's embarrassed by her time and said she didn't do that well, but who cares? Because Kaser ended up saying, here's the deal. We are just gonna draw the line in the sand. It is too soon for us to go home. They already all know that we're working together. So I am going to save Janelle. To which Cody was like, why would they do that? I don't know, Cody, because you were going to put them up on the block. Now, since Janelle and Kaser have done this, they can't do it anymore. So if one of them or one of their allies within the game do not win HOH next week, they are still at risk and they don't have this extra little safety. But there's always the power of veto unless someone decides to backdoor them, which I will not be happy about that. I'm very biased when it comes to Janelle and Kaser staying in this game. Some people think it was a stupid move. I think it was a very, very smart move. The worst thing you could do, it's like in Survivor, the worst thing you can do is get voted out holding an idol or get voted out holding a power. And we've seen that happen a lot over these last couple of seasons. Why not protect yourself? You know you're a huge target. You're Janie and Kaser. You were in the original BB All-Stars. You are a part of one of the best, my favorite, season of Big Brother ever, BB6. And Cody was definitely coming for you both. So I was so relieved and happy. And they were the only two people to play. So obviously one of them was going to win and take each other off. Also a good reason for them to use it right away this week is because no one else was going to do it. And next week you're going to have a lot of people you're going to be up against when you're competing in the safety suite. And the third week, the last week you can use it, everyone will be going for it. So props, season six. You're killing it. In some sad news, while Davon was talking to Keisha about 
her season BB10. Keisha says she and Rennie no longer talk. What? I thought they were going to be best friends. In my opinion, it's inappropriate. It's inappropriate. They should talk. Quit putting your fingers in other people's faces. Quit not talking to your friends that you were friends with. Rennie, it's inappropriate. Keisha said Rennie pretty much stopped talking to everyone after her season, and she didn't know why. And then she did her dolphin laugh. She doesn't know. But I thought that was sad because Keisha and Rennie had this really good friendship. Keisha says she does keep in contact with Dan and maybe a few others, but not that often. And Davon even asked, if Jesse would have been in this game, do you think you would have been able to play with him or be his friend? And Keisha's like, I, just, I don't know, I don't know. I just, uh, he's not my favorite, I wish him the best. That's how we all feel about Jesse. He's not our favorite, but good luck. Speaking of behind the scenes, Big Brother season T and news, Kevin from BB11 was sitting with Bailey and Janelle and they were talking about his season. And Kevin brought up the very controversial statements made on the feeds by Jeff in BB13 when he was talking to Kalia and he made very homophobic statements. And Kevin was explaining how in his season there were racial slurs that were thrown at him, which Brayden did do, Brayden. That idiot that was evicted first. Oh, I hated Brayden. But he said he saw Jeff's problematic behavior in BB11, and so he pretty much stayed away from him. And Kevin also said that he's disappointed that despite Jeff saying these things throughout the years, Big Brother and CBS kept bringing him back. And I was so shocked, you guys, that they did not cut the feeds on this. I was like, is someone not have their finger on the button? They let Kevin describe how he was feeling, and then finally someone cut the feeds to another camera. But it was great to hear Kevin's perspective because that must be very hurtful to feel like someone is saying these homophobic things and things that hurt you, and yet this game that you love keeps calling them back. Janelle and Bailey were a little defensive of Jeff, which I found interesting. They said, well, he apologized. He apologized and he changed. And I get that, you guys, I get that. Everyone deserves to be able to change with time and be the person they wanna be, I get it. But in Kevin's defense, did he apologize to Kevin? Did he ever say, I apologize to this community or these people who I know or lived in a house with? So I get why Kevin still harbors these feelings toward Jeff. And I wish that Jeff would have maybe talked to Kevin. There has been so many great moments on the feeds where people are opening up about issues that we haven't heard talked about forever on the feeds. And I think that's because we have really thoughtful people like Ian and Kaser in this house and on these feeds. Ian opened up about being autistic and it was a really great moment and Janelle was there and I believe Nicole A and Kaser and they were talking about the backyard not being open because the backyard has not been open for them and it might not be open until sometime this weekend and Janelle made a comment like yeah Ian you probably want to go out there so you can pace because Ian expressed that he was feeling fidgety and Ian said yeah and then he was looking at Kaser and he's like if you don't know I'm autistic and Kaser goes yep I knew that and I'm autistic too. And then Nicole Anthony jumped in and was like, I think I'm probably, I think everyone's a little bit on the spectrum and I might be autistic. And it was just this like great moment of like empathy and understanding. And I'm like, oh, gosh, we, I'm so happy we have these kind of people in the house. And that Ian said he stopped hiding his autism and was just like, this is who I am. And I think that's wonderful and beautiful. And I love Ian. It hasn't been talked about, about putting him up on the block. And I think it's because Cody is so close with Nicole Franzel and Nicole Franzel's a winner. So there's only two winners in this house, Ian and Nicole Franzel. And he worries that if he went the route, which would be the easiest route to go, if you were the first HOH in an all-star season, there were two winners, you put up the two winners and say, hey guys, listen, you know, um, you guys had a chance to win. I love you both. I'm going to give you a chance to play for the power of veto, but we are here and we all have never won. And we want to feel that confetti on our shoulders so we can go, where's mama? I'm not racist. But since he's friends with Nicole Franzel, I don't think he wants to open up that box because Nicole has brought it up to him while they were talking in the HOH room and said, has anyone talked about, um, uh, putting winners up? Cause it would be like so stupid if they did. It'd be like so stupid. It'd be like the stupidest thing if they did. And Ian, for the most part, everyone's just like, it's Ian, it's Ian. And yeah, he's here. And nobody seems to be targeting him. So way to go, Ian. Now let's move on to David. Speaking of winners, let's go the opposite end of the spectrum to someone who spent the least amount of time in the house. Originally, I was like, yes, give David a second chance. This is an all-star season, but technically it's not an all-star season because it's during a pandemic and it's going to be hard to get all the all-stars you need to get 
due to the pandemic and COVID and things like that. However, they've surprised me at the caliber of all-star they were able to pull during a pandemic. But I was all for David coming back because I felt the same way about David that I felt about Nicole Anthony is they were thrown in these really shitty seasons with these horrific house guests. And I wanted to give them a chance to really play. However, David is disappointing. He has had now two chances to do his homework and he did not know who Keisha was or Keisha's birthday. Be like Davon. Be like Nicole Anthony. Study this game. Act like you give a shit. David is very open about not knowing people's names. He's like, and you're who? I just don't. She's like, Janelle. Now I get this could be a strategy of his to just play dumb, but uh, you can play dumb about things you didn't experience in the game, but at least do your history on the players. It's insulting and it's annoying. And I'm just like, David, you don't know the people's names. Another thing that annoys me about David is Davon was talking to Bailey when they were solidifying their final two. And Davon said, yeah, David won't even look at me. He won't even talk to me. I don't know what the deal is. I'm like, David, what, what, huh? Davon wants to talk to him. She wants to connect, but she's like, he really won't give me the time of day. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> it's one thing not to know Keisha's name and or about Keisha's birthday. It's another thing to not want to talk or recognize Davon in this house, yet David is up Cody and Tyler's asses. I'm like, oh yeah, this is the David I kind of remember, the one that despite his good read on everyone, still wanted to play with the a-holes, Jerkson and Aquadouche. And then outside of the house, still wanted to be friends with them. So, oh yeah, this adds up. Because I think a lot of people want to give David tons of credit for being able to read the BB21 house. But let us not forget that he was sharing a lot of information with Kat. So how good of a read was that, not knowing that Kat was going back to Holly Beth 24 Wyoming and Jerkson with that information. And had he gotten back in the house, I think he probably would have played Aqua Douche and Jerkson's game unfortunately, just like Cliff Hogg tried to do. So I think the real person who had the read on that house was Kemi and David is getting the credit for it. So I'm okay with David going. So to all of you who were like, David shouldn't have been cast right now, I'm, I'm gonna say I was wrong and I agree with you. Unless he somehow turns his game around as amazing and starts talking to Davon and respects Keisha's birthday as the legendary BB moment that it is, I'm done. I'm done. You can you can come back another time, dude. You can do like a second chances or sorry, third chances now. Cause I mean, read the handbook, bro. Now I know I mentioned Nicole's been crying a lot on the feeds. We had a little moment of Kaser getting emotional. He was upstairs and he was talking to Nicole Anthony and Davon, and they were just talking about the things that are currently going on in the world and the social climate and civil rights in the United States and the current COVID pandemic. And he was just so articulate and wonderful in the way he was speaking about what was happening during his time on the show with us going to war with Iraq and him being an Iraqi American. And it was just so great to get these three people having a very civil discourse and passionate, empathetic conversation about things going on in the world. It is so much better than watching people grab a sex tool or Cisco. What's the verb? What's the noun? Like what, how do you make an egg? I was getting goosebumps. I had to run and tell my husband because I have no one else to talk to here quarantine and I'm just like look at it and he's like who are these people and I'm like oh yeah I didn't marry a big brother fan that's why I have a YouTube channel now Memphis he's in pretty good with these guys and I don't think Cody wants to put Memphis up at all or Enzo Memphis and Enzo are kind of in the same position the guys really like them with Enzo everyone thinks he's very funny he was watching Nicole Franzel cry he was in the kitchen and she was in the bathroom and he's like why is she crying why is she crying like it's like day two What's she crying? It's like one day. What are you crying for? I'm just crying because I'm tired. He's like, who cries when they're tired? Who cries? What the? Uh, yeah. I've been divorced for years. I got abs now. Yeah. You know, I just don't want a relationship. I got my mom on the middle floor. I got my sister in the basement. I'm upstairs with my kids. You know, I don't want to like get into this another relationship. But I got my booty calls. I do got my booty calls. You know, I use them. They use me. We do the booty thing. He was cracking Janelle and Kaser up. He's been cracking a lot of people up. And he's definitely doing the same game he did in BB12. 
He's kind of aligning with the guys, but more on the sly than he did with the brigade. And he's also using his sense of humor where Danny and Janelle and multiple all-stars are like, I don't want you to go home because I love that you make me laugh and you're entertaining. He also had a moment with Danny on the feeds that was kind of awkward because they were really laughing. They were sharing stories. Danny was sharing stories from her season about hiding wine and her and Kalia getting drunk after hiding bottles of wine when they would get liquor. And they seemed to build a really good rapport with one another another and then they were talking privately and Enzo was like yeah you know I just I get you I trust you you know I want to work with you and you know it doesn't hurt that you're evil dick's daughter because I love evil dick like I know that might be weird to you but I'm not trying to make it weird but I love evil dick you know and Danny said nothing she was like it was awkward but they still get along but she just will not talk about her dad. And I want her to so bad. I didn't want this to be a super long video, but since it's my first live feed spoiler video, I think it's gonna be kind of long. So hopefully you stuck with it. I think I captured a lot of what I wanted to say. I'm sure I'm gonna go back when I'm editing and go, oh, I forgot to say this. So I might kind of add little text things here or there of things that I forgot to tell you guys, but I will be back very soon with another BB22 live feed spoilers video. I'll also be going live again a lot this season so make sure you're subbed please give this video a thumbs up and leave all your comments i love to hear from you guys i appreciate you so much and i will talk to you very soon have a wonderful weekend bye guys